Behold, I have observed the earth and all its inhabitants, but my heart is grieved by what I have seen. The land is filled with corruption. Violence is spread across the face of the earth, and the sanctity of life has been forsaken. The harmony in which I created the world, where man, beast, and nature lived in a delicate balance, has been disrupted by greed, pride, and the disregard for the gifts I have bestowed upon my creation. It is not merely the wickedness of humanity's actions that compels me to send the flood, but the profound loss of connection between the heart of man and the divine spirit within. They have turned away from the path of righteousness, neglecting the virtues of compassion, stewardship, and reverence for life that I have taught. The earth cries out under the weight of their transgressions, and the fabric of creation itself has been torn asunder. Thus, I am compelled to cleanse the world, to wash away the corruption and begin anew. This flood is not only an act of judgment, but a merciful chance for rebirth. It is a call to return to the essence of what it means to be custodians of the earth and to live in harmony with all creation. Let this deluge serve as a reminder of the covenant between us, a promise that life in its purest form will always find a way to flourish under the guidance of my hand. Remember, from the depths of destruction, there shall emerge a new beginning, an opportunity to restore the balance and beauty of this world as it was intended. And so, with a heavy heart, I unleash the waters from the heavens and call forth the depths to rise each element acting as a divine instrument of renewal. The rain descends in an unending torrent, not merely to wash away the physical corruption that blights the earth, but to cleanse the air of the whispers of malice and greed that have filled it. As the floodwaters swell, they do not simply engulf the land. They dissolve the seeds of violence that have taken root in the soil, ensuring that from this ground shall sprout forth new life, nurtured by the virtues of peace and kindness. This rising flood submerges the monuments of pride and the citadels of power, symbols of man's arrogance and dominion over one another, leaving in their place the humble beginnings of a world where equity and humility shall be the foundations of society. The vast waters in their relentless flow wash away the divisions that have fragmented my creation, reminding all beings of the interconnectedness that is the essence of life. In this act of divine cleansing, the waters are imbued with the capacity for healing, restoring the bond between humanity and the divine, ensuring that the hearts of the survivors are turned once more towards the light of compassion and understanding. As the flood reshapes the contours of the earth, it also carves out channels of communication and empathy among its inhabitants, forging a world where the language of love and mutual respect prevails. The waters, in their receding, leave behind fertile ground, blank canvas upon which a new chapter of existence can be written, one characterized by stewardship of the earth and reverence for all forms of life. In the aftermath of the flood, as the waters retreat back to their appointed boundaries, they reveal a world reborn. The flood, in its mighty upheaval, was not an end but a beginning, a divine promise of hope and renewal, a testament to the enduring love I hold for my creation an invitation to embrace a path of righteousness and harmony. Let this renewed world stand as a monument of the possibility of second chances, a living covenant between the Creator and the custodians of the earth forevermore. The allure of ancient cultures lies not just in their monumental architecture, mystifying rituals, or even their pantheons of gods or goddesses, but deeply in the stories they have passed down through millennia. These narratives, echoing through time, reveal a captivating tapestry of human thought, emotion, and existential pondering. From the trials of Hercules in Greek mythology to the epic quests of the Ramayana, from the creation myths of the Norse gods to the tales of resurrection in Egyptian lore, each story carries within it a kernel of wisdom, a reflection of humanity's quest to understand the cosmos and its place within it. Among these myriad narratives, the story of the Great Flood holds a peculiarly universal appeal, surfacing in cultures as diverse as the Mesopotamian, Hindu, and Judeo-Christian. This widespread motif 
of a world engulfing flood sent by the divine as a response to human depravity speaks volumes about the ancient world's views on divine justice, morality, and the possibility of rebirth from the depths of destruction. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, the story of Noah's Ark encapsulates these themes poignantly. God, observing the wickedness of humanity, decides to cleanse the earth with a flood, sparing only Noah, a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and his family, along with a pair of each animal species. This divine intervention is not merely an act of destruction, but a deeply symbolic gesture of renewal, a chance to reset the moral compass of humanity. It's a narrative that underscores the consequences of moral decay and the continuous cycle of sin, judgment, and redemption. Several biblical verses come to mind, illuminating the lessons embedded within the story of the flood. In Genesis 6, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. A critical element often overlooked is the mention of the sons of God in Genesis 6. This passage introduces the Nephilim, enigmatic figures whose interactions with humanity mark a significant divergence from the intended divine order. Their existence and the unions between these sons of God and the daughters of humans symbolize a profound disruption, contributing to the earth's moral and spiritual corruption. The mixing of the divine and mortal realms, resulting in beings of immense power and ambiguous nature, underscores the multifaceted reasons for the flood. It wasn't solely a response to human wickedness, but also to a cosmic disorder that blurred the boundaries between the celestial and the earthly exacerbating the moral decay and violence that filled the earth. Also, the notion of preserving a seed through Noah and his family, along with pairs of all living creatures, speaks to the idea of continuity and the preservation of potential for goodness and righteousness. Noah, described as a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, represents the seed of a new humanity capable of living in accordance with divine will. This concept underscores the narrative's emphasis on the possibility of renewal and the importance of maintaining a lineage, both human and animal, that could repopulate and restore the earth in the aftermath of divine judgment. As we explore the allure of ancient cultures and their repeated stories, the tale of the Great Flood stands as a testament to the enduring human fascination with divine justice, moral integrity, and the hope for renewal amidst the ruins of a fallen world. Central to many ancient traditions is the motif of a great flood, a cataclysm that reshapes the very foundation of the world. Despite their distinct cultural backdrops, these stories harbor a commonality that binds the human narrative across continents and epochs. They echo our collective dread of total annihilation, juxtaposed with our perpetual hope for redemption and renewal. Here we explore how various cultures have navigated themes of divine displeasure, human morality, and the dawn of new beginnings through these shared myths. As we transition from the overarching themes of flood myths to the specifics of each culture's rendition, it's intriguing to consider why these stories have found a place in so many diverse traditions. What does this say about our shared human experience and our intrinsic need to find meaning in the chaos of nature? Back to Noah, deeply ingrained in Judeo-Christian lore, stands as a poignant narrative of divine intervention aimed at eradicating corruption through a purifying flood. This tale, emphasizing divine justice and mercy, strikes a chord with us, resonating with these universal themes of consequence, forgiveness, and the promise of a new covenant symbolized by the rainbow. In its essence is a reflection on the repercussions of our actions and the hope for a fresh start. I mean, when we think about why Noah would need all these animals and what they represent, Indeed, the practicality of housing every species on the ark raises questions, suggesting a deeper, symbolic interpretation of this aspect of the narrative. The animals and their diversity and completeness could be seen as representing the entirety of God's creation, embodying this interconnectedness and balance of the natural world. This collection was not just about preservation, 
but also about the restoration of the world in its fullness post-flood. It underscores a message of stewardship and the importance of every life form in the divine schema, emphasizing that the renewal of the earth was to encompass all of creation, not just humanity. The ark in this light becomes a vessel of salvation and a symbol of hope for a new beginning where humans and nature could coexist in harmony, reflecting the ideal order as originally intended. Utnapishtim is also instructed to bring aboard the ark all living things, to keep them alive with you. This directive mirrors the story of Noah, highlighting a universal theme of preserving life through a cataclysmic event, underscoring the importance of biodiversity for the rebirth of civilization. Similarly, in Hindu mythology, the story of Manu, the first man who saves terrestrial life by building a boat to the behest of Matsya, an avatar of Vishnu in the form of a fish, reflects a profound respect for life in all its forms. Matsya warns Manu of the impending flood and instructs him to gather seeds and animals, suggesting a renewal not only of human life, but of the natural order itself. The segue from Noah's Ark to the Epic of Gilgamesh offers a mesmerizing glimpse into the ancient Mesopotamian worldview. The flood story within the Gilgamesh epic recounting Utnapishtim's survival mirrors Noah's narrative, yet it introduces unique elements that reflect the complexities of human-divine relationships and Mesopotamian beliefs. This parallel invites contemplation on the nature of immortality, the limits of human ambition, and the precarious balance maintained by the gods. The narrative of Mandu in Hindu mythology bridges the gap between the divine and the existential, offering a story of survival, duty, and cosmic renewal. As we explore Manu's response to divine forewarning, we're reminded of the cyclical view of existence prevalent in Hindu thought, as well as the emphasis on righteousness, or dharma. This story enriches our understanding of human resilience and the eternal cycle of creation and destruction adding depth to our exploration of flood myths. As we transition between these diverse cultural narratives, it becomes evident that the story of the flood is more than a mere myth. It's a reflection of our collective consciousness. Each tale, while rooted in its own tradition, speaks to universal human concerns. Our vulnerability to nature's fury, our capacity for moral choice, and our undying hope for regeneration. The persistence of flood myths and the lore of ancient cultures speaks volumes about their significance, serving as a bridge connecting past and present, reminding us of our shared strengths and weaknesses. They compel us to reflect on our place in the universe, the essence of our moral compass, and the impact of our actions on the world. From the annals of Noah through the epic journey of Gilgamesh to the righteous path of Manu are deep meditations on the human spirit. They encapsulate our fears, our hopes, and our relentless pursuit of understanding and renewal. As we navigate the complexities of the modern world, these ancient stories offer not just lessons from the past, but a beacon of hope for the future, reminding us of the indomitable human spirit that thrives on connection, resilience, and the perpetual quest for a better world. Through these narratives, we are reminded that, despite our diverse cultures and histories, we share a common humanity that endures through the ages. Human Fluence, out.